<clears throat> All right, we'll call this regular monthly meeting to order for the Scarborough Sanitary District. It's yes. Here, take this. I don't have one from Wells Sanitary District. Yeah, I broke. Oh well. So, anyway, October twenty seventh monthly meeting, Town Hall Scarborough. We'll do a roll call, and we'll start on the. That side. How about you, Ben? You here? I am. All right. Mike Stein? I am here. Ruth Summers? Here. Paul Rodriguez? Here. Jason Greenleaf? Here. And I'm Chairman Nick Rico. I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the September meeting. Thank Second. you, Jason. Thank you, Ben. Any corrections? Additions, subtractions, all in favor of that? Unopposed? Thank you. Superintendent's report. Um, a copy of the monthly report of operations. There we go. A copy of the report uh, of uh, monthly report of operations for the month of September is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.26 million gallons a day, and our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. Uh, we averaged 97% uh, uh, BOD removal and 98% total suspended solids removal, with average concentrations of 7 and 5 milligrams per liter, respectfully. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of September is also included in your packet. Uh, there were no issues of concern noted. Grondon has completed the installation of the new force main on Gorham Road. Uh, we will be doing the tie-in of the new force main uh, during the night of November 2nd. Um, the project has gone very well and with little, little issues so far. They did the final pressure test uh, today. And, uh, um, and that passed without any issues. So we uh, look forward to a nice, tra a simple transition over to the new force main. Hopefully it will all go well. Um, our budget workshop is scheduled, is, our budget workshop is scheduled for um, uh, immediately after our next regular monthly meeting on November 17th. Uh, I got contacted by Stacy Brenner, uh, who asked to, to meet with uh, myself and tour the wastewater treatment facility. Stacy is one of the um, state reps, and she met with myself, Nick Rico, Emily Prescott from SACO, and Chris Rhino from Wright Pierce. Um, and we discussed uh, uh, the impacts that the recently passed LD 1911 had with regard to our operations and increasing costs. And, and uh, tried to, uh, gave her a nice tour of the facility and uh, talked about moving forward and with, with regards working at, on regional uh, solutions with the state. Uh, so it was, a, it was a nice visit that we had. Um, after 10 months, our inspector's truck has been delivered, uh, I guess in a nice timely fashion. Uh, as part of ongoing maintenance, we replaced five manhole frames and covers, uh, three on Route 1, and, and as the traffic, traffic hit the covers right after installation, they, they started to bounce off. Uh, we had to put some sealant on them to keep them in place. We called uh, EJ uh, the Foundry, and they sent up a representative, and we found that the covers were not uh, true or uh, even. EJ is looking into what happened, and we'll be replacing the covers uh, to, that are uh, uh, out of true. We met on site with Westcore and AirClean to review options for the replacement of the odor control system within the sludge dewatering building. That'll be uh, something that will be on the budget for uh, next year. Uh, during our scheduled load banking, we found that the generator pump station 23, which is the one on Haggis Parkway, uh, would not run at full load, the 100 kW generator. Uh, it could only support a 45 kilowatt load, at which point it started, uh, it would just uh, stall out. Um, Caterpillar came out, and it was determined that the fuel injector pump uh, just needed some uh, 
adjustment and they completed that and now it's back up and running at, at full load. Also, uh, during the schedule of load banking, uh, it was noted that the fuel injector pump on uh, the pump station down at one, which is at snow scanning road, was leaking and needed to be rebuilt. Uh, that has been removed and sent back to be rebuilt, rebuilt and we have a temporary set generator set, set up on site. And we'll uh, keep it there while this work is uh, being completed. And with that, that is my report. Any questions for the superintendent? Go ahead, Mike. Um, just, just a note. Just you know, looking at the uh... monthly operating report there at the wastewater facility. Just noting on a day in September that there was a lot of rain, mm -hmm. that the flow did increase, but I mean it was a reasonable increase. It's not like it went and went went off the charts. So that's that's certainly a good thing. <laughs> No, we, uh, well, two things there. It's been a dry time, so the, uh, there's been a lot of uh, ground uh, it's absorbing of the, the uh, rain. And also, we do have a, um, uh, a separated system in Scarborough, and so we don't have any um, known uh, storm sewers tied into our, our sewer system. Uh, there's the occasional some pump which should not be connected, but they are. Um, and during real wet weather and some pumps are pumping, we will see that impact and we will see that flow go up. A lot of times, most of the time that we will see our flow increase during wet weather is after a, um, a snow melt in the spring. Cool. Any other questions for the superintendent? All right. Correspondence, we have none. We have no business. New business. Costco. Costco. On behalf of uh, Costco Wholesale Inc., BL Companies requested district approval for a 161,000 square foot retail and wholesale building as pre presented in their submittal documents. Uh, the requested flow is 5,000 gallons per day based on their peak quarter of a similar size uh, facility located in Connecticut. I recommend approval with the following conditions. Uh, the wastewater flow allocation limited to the 5,000 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Any flows more than the allotment or characteristics are subject to additional approvals. Uh, the requested 5,000 gallons per day of wastewater flow, flow is fully subject to the district's capacity reserve fee. Uh, the current capacity reserve fee is $19.15 per gallon uh, based on October's uh, ENR. Uh, again, it's adjusted monthly based on the ENR and uh, index. Based on the current rates, the total capacity reserve fee due is $95,750. Any flows more than the approved allocations are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. And then a sewer, grease interceptor, and then oil water sewer uh, separator permit uh, will be required. And we do have a representative here from Costco. Sure. So could you uh, go up to the podium? What's that? Should you make a, get a motion? Oh, yeah. Motion? What am I doing? Hold on a second. We need to have a motion to discuss the project. We need a motion on the floor. Please. Motion to approve the project with the conditions prescribed. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Paul. Now, if you can go up <laughs> to the podium and introduce yourself. Good evening. My name is Michelle Carlson. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of Maine. On behalf of Costco, I'm here tonight. I do have one request, because um, I don't want to have to come back if, for some reason, the flows go up up a little bit or down a little bit, because I think the, the stores were about 4,900 gallons a day. Is there a way to up that to like 6,000 so we're not coming back here? In a year, I mean, I know the the you know the fee is going to go up a little bit, but I think that would be more realistic so that someone's not coming back here. Yeah, we can we can uh, we'll amend the uh, approval okay. based on the six thousand. Uh, okay. The trustees will. That is based on uh, fixture counts. 
And similar to uh, the main subsurface rules, fixture counts and the subsurface rules are based on max day flows. And our capacity reserve fees are calculated based on a 90 day average daily flow. Okay, and so, yeah. So you get estimated then 5,000, but now she's asking for 6,000. Yeah, on, on the next page, they did provide some, some flow data from their other facility. Uh, other facility okay. And that's, I went through that, and on, you know, the, the highest it was close to the 5,000, the highest quarter was close to the 5,000 gallons per oh, day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's how we get data from Portland Water District. We get it on a quarterly basis. We don't get it on a daily basis. Cool. No, no, that's okay. We, I just, that's cutting it really close, right? What if it goes to 5,100 gallons in a quarter and then we're, we're, we're over? So, yeah, no, uh, one of the trustees will be able to amend the approval to 6,000. We'll, we'll okay. just and then, amend the approval. approval. Then can I ask one other question? Mm -hmm. um, sure. The fees, the fee that has to be paid, is that paid the, the big fee when they apply for the permit? Yes, it is. Okay, that's all I need to know. Thank you. No, you can stay up there because we have questions for you. Uh -oh. That's why. I have Any a plan if you need, I have a drawing if you need to see the green highlight where the sewer runs. No but. worries. <laughs> um, I have a few questions, actually, for the plans. Do we have a tripod for that? That I do not know. Uh, right there. Where of course we do. Thank you, Serena. Oh, excellent. Thank you. So... I have a few questions on the plans. On sheet SU1, I noticed that the water, sewer, and gas lines all run down the east side of the building. And water and sewer are 10 feet apart, but the gas is kind of close to the sewer. I, I don't know if we have a, an actual requirement, but it would be prudent to keep those farther than four feet apart. We've already moved the gas. Sure. It's going around the back of the, the back of the building through the parking spaces behind the building here. Gas the is and moved. And it's going to come in and cut over inside the building. Oh, that answers that question. Um, I was a little confused by the three manholes all together, and then I realized one is a pump station, another a dry well or a valve yeah. pit, and yeah. then a, a discharge manhole. Val valve pit, you know, wet well, and then the discharge manhole. It's gonna it's gonna discharge into a gravity manhole, and then it'll tie into the 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 stub and innovation way. Cool. And there are five uh, horsepower Vaughn submersible pumps in there. Yep, I saw that on DN nine, but one of the things that I was thinking about and. Um, that pump station were put in the place where SMH five is on the southeast corner of the building. It wouldn't have to be so deep. I mean, the pump station is eighteen feet deep. Correct. To get gravity all the way around the building. If you put that pump station over there, have the gravity flow from the west or the south side flow back to that, and then a smaller force main to the terminus, see you could avoid going so deep, just a thought. Yeah, we, we looked at that. The problem is, is that there's not really any room to put it. Like, if you look around the site, I mean, it really needs to go in that back where we have it over there. And so we're starting, you know, obviously from on the opposite side of the building by the baler and the compactor and coming all the way around because there's five, there's five connection points. Yep. They don't want anything like that in the front of the store or anywhere where it's gonna impact deliveries, customers. Oh, okay. That's, that's why, and we, have, we actually have the exact same station in the exact same location in a store that opened 11 months ago in South Windsor, Connecticut. Okay. And that, that's why. And I noticed that the discharge is actually an eight inch gravity main. It's going into an eight inch, it's going into an eight inch gravity line 
through a manhole, and then it goes into the, into the connection point in an innovation way. So we're discharging into a gravity line into the manhole on site, and then it'll flow via gravity on to innov into the manhole in innovation way. So we're not pumping into innovation way. We're pumping into a manhole on site, and then it drains gravity to innovation. All right. It was just a little confusing, because on the detail, it looks like the force main is four inch, and then right outside the valve pit gets bushed up to eight. That's, that should be a gravity line. It's not pumping. It's not pumping through an eight inch force main. That wouldn't, that wouldn't work. It's a four inch, okay. it's a four inch force main that goes into it. That's going into the manhole. Is that normal? So that's probably just an error. I've seen it done that way. And I've also seen it discharge into a, a manhole. A we, we can do it whichever way you prefer. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter to us. They're not showing the manhole here, although they no, show the manhole. No, the manhole is seven feet away from there. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's something I hadn't seen. The, the detail's a little goofy. Yeah, yeah we've, done, we've done, like I said, we did the exact same thing in um, actually two other pump stations that we've designed for them. That's what they prefer. But if, if you have a different no, preference, we, it doesn't matter to us. I don't have, if it works, it works. It works. Um, so far. I didn't stamp the drawing, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, I think that was the, those were the major ones. I'm glad you're moving the cast me. That's helpful. What's the flow rate on these pump stations? Oh, I knew you were going to ask that. Five. Be around 200 gallons a minute just to keep the velocities up. All right. What would you just say? Around 200, 200 gallons, gallons, per gallons per minute just to keep the velocities up. Yeah, it's going to say like 175, but yeah. I can pull the exact number up if you need it. So are there updated plans that he needs to see with the gas main? I, I can send that to him. We, we are waiting for, you know, this permit to then put together the final set of drawings. We have a, you know, we had some comments from the planning board that we've addressed. Um, we're, we're installing a right turn lane um, off of Payne Road. That's the last condition of approval um, comments that we have to address to clean up the drawings. So for your records, I'm happy to... I could get you a plan tomorrow without the gas, with the gas main relocated. Part, part of the permit process is getting construction phase drawings, yep. and then finally uh, uh, at the end getting as built. Okay, so okay. That works for that's me. already covered. Cool. Any other questions for Michelle? Thank um, you. Actually, I do. Um, I know you, you mentioned that there are five building connections for, for the sewer, and there's food prep and um, granted, my eyes aren't as young as they used to be. Um, what connection will have the grease interceptor? Do you want me to pull, bring this up to you? Can I show it? Well, uh, just, uh, I, well there, there's, there's two. There's, there's, there's two. There's, 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 there's a connection on the north side. Okay. This right here is the, is the fresh line, and this comes out here, and this is where those hydromechanical oh, okay. units are here. Okay, that's where the units are here. And then over here is where, you know, if you ever been to Costco, you can go in and buy the hot dog or right. the soda or whatever. There's another one right here. So those are where the two grease traps are. And okay. Over here, there's a sand separator to take care of any grit or anything that gets in the receiving area. Right, okay. So, but, but they are not shown on the drawings we have? Or are yes, they? they are. They're, yeah, call, yeah. they're called out. There's a, there's a symbol. Um, the second symbol up right there, that, that's their grease trap symbol. And they are, oh. they are there. They're very small. <laughs> on When you have half-scale plans, it's really hard I to read. I didn't see them, but I did see them. <laughs> I have to use my. This was easier when I looked at them <laughs> online and I went to 400. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. You want to stack, double stack glasses? No, I, I just need three and a half for these things. Yikes. Any other questions for Michelle? Okay, before we vote on the original motion, I need an amendment to approve 6,000 gallons per day. Motion to And that will impact the capacity reserve fee due. Thank you. 
Okay, that's our motion. Second. Yep. We've been seconded. Okay, so let's first vote on the amendment. All in favor on increasing it to 6,000 gallons per day. None opposed. And then on the original motion uh, to approve the project. None opposed. Cool? Amended. Yeah. As amended, yes. Cool. Thank you. So next step is we submit the application. Right? Yeah, we'll send you an approval which will have to be signed by um, Costco. Um, and then at that point in time, you just fill out an application. Can you send that to me? Or? Yeah. Okay, good. Because then I can make sure it's yep. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. All right. Next item up is budget summary. And the nine month budget summary is included in your. Uh, whoops. It's 10 months. Good catch. The 10 month budget summary is included <coughs> in your packet. I recommend approval. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Ben. Any questions for the superintendent? Oh, no, thank you. All in favor? <laughs> thank you. None opposed. Cool. My engineering is better than my name. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Uh, trustee comments. We'll, we'll start with Ruth this time. Um, great job by everyone. Thank you very much. It's always fun to come to these meetings and um, see what's happening. You guys did such a great job with dispersing information. So thank you very much. Thank you. Paul. I will echo those comments and uh, just add that it's been a great pleasure and an honor to, uh, to serve these last uh, four and a half years. Uh, the district is uh, extremely well-run organization, staff is tremendous, leadership is great, and uh, it's just been, it's been a true honor, and the town is, is lucky to have such a well-run district. So, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for that. Ooh. Jason. Well, first off, uh, the heels of that comment, thanks to Paul for your four years of service, and uh, best wishes to you and all your future endeavors. And uh, yeah, thanks to the staff for all that they do and I'll send out a, a good luck to the boys uh, soccer team tonight in their playoff game. <laughs> ben? Yeah, thank you to uh, the staff and Dave for, and uh, Josh for everything well run month and uh, yeah, I, w I also wish the boys soccer team good luck tonight. Mike. Um, yeah, e echoing everyone's comments, you know, it's been another good month, you know. Uh, thank you to everyone involved and uh, also to Paul, good luck and uh, thank you for serving and uh, hope to see you around. Cool. I will too echo the fellow trustee comments. Paul, thanks for your service. Three years or four years? Four. four. Excellent. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, good luck to the Scarborough soccer team tonight in the playoffs. And I want to wish everyone a happy Halloween. And I'll entertain the final motion of the evening. Thank you, Paul. Your last motion. Second. Thank you, Jason. All in favor? We're done.